Let's go! So usually in the beginning we do a song just to get us started, so. Um, Alexa, play Angel by Sarah McLaughlin. playing angel and today we are in the presence of another angel the death angel Rena. well i don't know about referring me as that i try to help the families <laughs> welcome everyone to today's podcast we are with Rena sliger who is the apprentice at Dignity Funeral Home here in Hamilton, Texas. She's going to give us some tips and answer some questions so we can make an informed decision on whenever we, um, it's time to plan a funeral for our loved ones. So what services does your funeral home provide? Pretty much anything you want. As far as from the least to the greatest. And do y'all do the embalming there? Some of it. There's only one embalmer that's licensed, and I'm working on getting my license. So oh wow, we are. Sometimes we get too much, so we have to have some help. And then if you need help, you send it to a like a sister funeral home. Mm, there's a place at Temple that we use. That's good to know. My my headphones are going in and out of that mode. All right, I think they're back. That's right, fine. Okay. Uh, so from the first off, let's start with the process. From when you get the phone call, who do you get a phone call from? Well, you can get a phone call from the JP, the dispatcher, a family member, a hospice nurse, the hospital, a nursing home facility, all different police officer. Who's supposed to call you first? There's not really anyone supposed to call us. No. It's, it's just whoever calls drew the lucky straw to call us. And then when they call you, let's say if it's a family member, do you then have to call the police department or do you ask them if they've called um that depends on whether you're talking up can you fix these presley <laughs> i told you that they would do that you just gotta keep <laughs> keep going it's <laughs> doing it to me i too. feel like i'm in a fish pond <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, oh. it, it feels like your ears are popping kind of yes right? yeah it's on touch screen. And I feel like I'm talking like really loud. Well, that's okay. In the that's that's what gets it's good quality video. Oh, okay, that's what you want. You just gotta yes. keep talking. Anyway, when we get the first call, it's like when it's a nursing home facility or the hospital. The police are usually not involved in all that. Hospice nurse not involved. The only time we get one of those is when it's a county call, usually. A county call. You mean like um, a dispatcher? Well, like if someone found them deceased, you know, and nobody was with them, nobody witnessed it, that kind of thing. How often does that happen in rural areas? Well, I'll be honest with you, a lot more than I really thought it did when I took this job. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's crazy. I mean, it is crazy. It it's is sad. Crazy. It's, it is. How many people are left alone and nobody... But then you have some that people do check on, but maybe let's, wait let's just day. face it. Sometimes people just get contrary in their old age. Mm -hmm. They don't answer the door. They don't answer their phone. Maybe they don't even hear the darn thing ringing. Who knows? And so instead of, because I know so with some of our people clients, weren't checking on them, they just didn't allow them to check. On yes, them. that's very true. We had one client that um, kind of same scenario. 
they wouldn't answer the door. So then we would do a wellness check. After so many times of doing the wellness check, it's like, do we seriously have to keep calling them? We know they're fine. So you think that they're okay in your mind, but do they you really know? Do you really know until you know? Until they're not okay. Until they're not okay. Yep. So you get the call and um, from county. So you have to go and pick up the body. Mm -hmm. What is that process like? And how many people are usually with you? And what information are you given before you go to pick up the body? Unless we're going to a facility like a nursing home or the hospital, we require two, two people. Just in case, because we don't really know the situation we're getting into. There's a lot of unknowns. Because the dispatch doesn't know whenever they call us, if they're the ones that called us. Um, sometimes family standing right in front of the one that called, so he can't give us the details. Or is you know. in shock or... Yes. Yeah, the, the, the list of the we, details. When we leave the funeral home for one of those cases, we try to think that it's the worst case scenario. So to you're be prepared. prepared. And you also, we were talking before, you said that was one of the things that, that y'all do just to make sure, because you are having to drive such long distances to some of these areas, and there is a lot of times no service, you know, <laughs> just exactly. in the middle of nothing in um, farmland of Texas. And so you always try to have everything with you for just in case. Yes. And some of the things that I don't think that we realize what they do and the stuff that they have to have and to be prepared for, because most people don't know or, and they really don't want to know unless you're intrigued like me. Um, but the support that they need to carry the body especially if it's been there for a long time there is um, different types of bags that are needed um and you can't use a bag more than once i asked that old thrifty me she said that no. you're not allowed to use we a bag do not double dip <laughs> <laughs> so but i didn't even think about that i'm like you know i'm over here like oh you know, the zipper on the bag needs, because you need to make sure you have all the materials of the body and the fluids, the... Needs to be contained. Contained in a good bag made in the USA. Well, I don't really know where they're made. <laughs> it better be made in the USA. But I know that they're... Not cheap. Heavy duty ones and light duty ones. And what are some reasons... Because there's sometimes that you don't have to use a bag, and that would... in most cases we don't. We and don't. That's an unnecessary expense for the families, and we just don't do it if it's not necessary. So, um, whenever you do need to use it, it's usually because the family is requesting or the county is requesting them to be. Well, if we roll up on the office. scene and any of the. Police officer, JP, county judge, anybody says autopsy, that's an automatic bag. Put them that in. just protects the scene, protects the body until they get it up there to, to we can get it to Dallas too. So Dallas is where y'all do the autopsies? Yes. And how long does that take? Mm, usually about three days. And that's just an average. And what, what is the point of an autopsy? To find the cause of death. That's pretty cool. That would be something interesting I to mean, learn. You know, if they suspicious causes, um, I haven't really had one of those yet. Most of mine have just been family cases that personally requested it that wanted to know. And if the family person requests it, then it's on the family's yes. pocket. Then it becomes their financial responsibility. And if the city or county, or would it just be county? County. County request it, then it would be on county's expense. Yes. Part of like the policing or the, okay. Yes. So we have the body. What What is it like when you're going in? Well, first off, how long have you been working? I started in July of last year, so I'm still pretty new at this. I know, but which is I interesting. Love my job. I love my new job. And you're passionate about it, and 
about helping families and, and yes and they everyone knows you she's everyone knows Raina this is a <laughs> she is popular in this town and so that's good too it's comforting when you see a familiar face during you know a sad time yes I've had families that they just when I walk in the door you can see them all just take a deep breath and sigh of relief and like oh it's you and I'm like they just I don't know Makes you smile inside, kind of, but but then you're yeah. kind of sad still that while you're there. Yeah, because you know, because that's going both ways. Not only are you glad to be there for them, but you're also the people that are have passed, or you know, I'm them. sad for why I have to be there, but I'm glad I can be. There. Yes, yes. So um, you get there with another person. Get the body let's just do a normal scenario they had hospice they had the great they were able to pass away at home great overall experience as far as the dying process and then y'all come in we'll go, and yeah. we'll roll up to the scene first we, one or both of us will get out of the car i mean if it's if somebody we're real familiar with and we both know them which a lot of times it is that way we'll both go in the house introduce ourselves make sure that you know, all the kids know us and the rest of the family or then we assess the situation, you know, make sure where they are, that we can get our cot in there, what it's going to take to get them out of the house with dignity. Yes. Um, you know, whether we And what does that mean with, when you say with dignity, does that mean making sure the body is covered? Yes. That All of that. I mean, cleaned. Sometimes, let's just face it, those older homes, older little apartments. They'll have hallways in them about this wide. We cannot make turns. We cannot make corners. No, what do you do with cot. that? It, it, it's just a cold, hard fact of life. We have a sling cot that we'll put the deceased on. Still, we're very dignified about it. And most of the times, I will ask the family, if, you know, would you step out? Please step into another room until we get them on the cot. Just because they don't need to see that no. we had to carry them out like that. Yes. It's just, to me, it's just not a very dignified process, but it is a necessary So it's like they're, standed, they're standing up? No, no. It's just a, uh, we call it, it's just a sling. It's like a web thing with handles on it that's the length of their body, and we slide it under them, and then usually four we prefer four but yes. if we can't get four then two or three will get it one will take the head two will get on each side and we just pull them drag them you know not really drag them <laughs> I get what you but sometimes we have to <laughs> if it's necessary i mean you, it's just you got to get the body out we i have to get her out of this little room like out into this other room where i can get her on the car and these old homes a lot of people don't realize but they are very very teeny bunch of different little rooms there's no usually not no hallways so you're having to kind of maneuver to get to these old homes yes and that is so hard. we yes that's what we and then if do. you have hospital equipment and all the other stuff in there it's it's even more cluttered and we're really not dragging anybody <laughs> we just we carry it but I'm from the country, you know. I'm this country. is real Texas. So we're in small town America, and I drag everything, whether I'm carrying it or not. I'm dragging it. So. It's just a term. It doesn't yes, mean it's just she's a term. dragging it. So um, sometimes too, I bet you kind of like, hey, let me go talk with this family, calm them down. You get the body ready to be taken out, and then. Yes, my coworkers and I, we work very well together. If if they don't know them, then I'll go talk to them and he'll go check it out and come give me the thumbs up, the thumbs down, and we'll go from there. I remember when I worked in the nursing home, whenever we had someone pass away, they were all, y'all were always so good to make sure that the staff knows that we're taking the body out make sure all the residents are put in their room so they don't see the body going out and then it was always covered in yes. a, a beautiful like a purple maroon cover of the body and um cot covers is what we call that <laughs> <laughs> it, it looks like a really nice comforter we used to have matching pillows but i lost them oh they got a pillow too mm -hmm. <laughs> i might have accidentally left them somewhere oh 
Yeah. Hopefully someone's not using it. I gotta get a new one, so it'll be okay. <laughs> No, Someone's using that, that, that is one of my pet peeves though when I go to a facility. I, I always call to see which hall they're on. Can I back up to the closest door there? So the likelihood of other patients seeing us leaving, to me that's just not right. No, it's not. It's, and cause not. it's like they're, sometimes you feel like they're just sitting there waiting, you know, and then they see it happen in front of them. And it's just like throwing it in their face. Yeah. And I don't. No, I'm that, I'm not that person. No, no, you're not. Um, so let's you get the does the the vehicle that y'all take to pick up the body. Do you leave the air conditioning running? What do you mean? That way it doesn't get hot in there. You leave it well, running. I mean, if we get out, we take the keys with us. Oh, I would be leaving it on well, with the air blowing. A, we don't want somebody stealing our car. No one's gonna steal that. <laughs> no, but I mean, it's just, it's, that is part of y'all's policy. That's part of being with a big firm that has big city funeral homes that people do steal your cars. Yeah, they don't care what it is. Yeah. So we still have to just do that. So sometimes you just have to go back and start the car if it's hot before you Usually bring the body in. out there and one of us will go crank it and get the AC rolling. And in the, in the vehicle... Does it have like a back to, so like you have your two, your driver in your, what is that? We have a minivan. But do you have like a wall in between y'all? You're just going on a ride. There's just no seats in the back. There's a different kind of a floor put in there that's designed for cots. It has little indentions in the floor where the poles go in. The poles on the cot will slide in there and it secures it so it doesn't slide all over. And y'all are just hanging out. And there's there's not really room for two cots in there, but s sometimes we'll put two in there if we know the road is going to be really crooked or something. Because we have no way to keep it upright. And sometimes they'll tip over. Oh, my goodness. So we that we try to prevent that. So, so we just slide another one in there beside it or to keep that from happening. So they don't have straps on them? No. Well, the cot does. The cot has straps that we strap the deceased down with. But you, you still don't want it to cot, tip over. The whole cot sometimes will. Especially yeah. on these uh, Hamilton roads. You got that right. They're <laughs> a little rough sometimes. They're a little and rough. And the county roads are a little curvy and... Yes, and for people who don't know, there we have dirt roads in Texas. Lots of them. Lots of dirt roads, so... And don't get us wrong, the counties maintain them very yes, well. Yes, but they're dirt roads. But we've had a lot of rain, so they're washed out, they're rough boardy. Yeah, it's just, it's a dirt road. It's a dirt road. It is. We're in the is. country. Yeah. Small town America. Yep, exactly. Living the good life. Living the good life. So in this good life, we have the bot, the air is cooled, bodies in. Um, what paperwork do y'all have to get from the family, if you can? To help with the smooth process because that's one thing i want people to know too is you know it's already it's not you know when someone passes away it's not uh, always a fun experience not something you're looking to looking forward to looking forward to is that right yeah um so to make it a smooth process how can we educate our viewers on what paperwork they should have ready so y'all can do y'all's job as fast as you need to to get well most of the identification information we've already gotten when the first call came in we collect that if they have it if not then i will have to have that their id and um we'll you know i'll ask them a few questions if i don't have the you know their full name i try to get that because everything we do it needs their full name on it, especially if they're going to go to be cremated that they're really picky about that paperwork like um, full name middle first name. middle last not just well nickname last name yeah because whatever i start doing paperwork i have to have from start to finish it has to all match okay but um the big thing is are you going to want a burial or a cremation and so you'd like to know that at the scene because i have to have permission to embalm and I can take verbal. I just need to have verbal permission 
to embalm or not embalm. That is, that's the big deal for us. And what is embalming for people who don't know? It is a way that we can preserve the body and slow down the process of decomposition. I mean, so do you put in a fluid in yes. the body? Like an IV? It's a combination. Yes, it's kind of an IV. It's more of an arterial. But. Um, and so does it make the body cold? No. No? What no. makes the body cold is the room that we keep them in. And why do you do I mean, if you had one in here, this is the temperature they'd be. Because there's no blood or nothing running through the body. Well, it. even... It, it, they just pick up whatever temperature they're in. I mean, okay, so that has no nothing, longer, the embalming has nothing to do you know, with the temperature. After they pass, they're no longer metabolizing anything, so their body temperature is not fluctuating anymore. So tell me the embalming process. Family says yes, they want them. You all, you all ask them, do you want the body to be embalmed? They said yes. So you're taking the deceased back. You got all the identification. Do they need to? Do they give you any life insurance stuff then, or do they wait till later? Just um, depends. We usually do that in the arrangement conference. Okay. That'll be the first meeting that we have with the family to discuss all their wants, all their needs, religious. Okay. What kind of service they want. Um, that kind of stuff. Okay, so th they tell you they want the body in bond. What do you do then? Are we already through with all the other stuff? What's the other stuff before the embalming? Taking the, the body back. arrangement conference, like oh. side of the contract. I mean, but it's better to the quicker we can embalm if you want them embalm for like a public visitation. The the quicker we can do it the better the body's going to look. Okay. Makes sense because it's going to stop it from... Yes. Yes. Okay. And, you know, it, it's, it just is. Is there a rule on how soon they have to choose to be for it to be embalmed? I mean, can they, like, no, say... they have a rule that says how quick they have to be in refrigeration. So, let's say they decide, or like, one or the other. three days later they want it embalmed. If we can still do it. You can still do it. It's just not going to look as good as it would have if you would have done it three days ago. Not in my opinion. Okay. It makes sense because it's three. The body's three days older mm -hmm. in that that uh, position. It depends too on whether the one that picked them up. I mean, there's certain things we have, like setting their features is what we call it. What is it called? Setting their features. We want them to, you know, slight smile. Eyes not all the way down, you know, slightly up. Do you leave the eyeballs in? Yes. That was a lie. TikTok got me. They told me that they take them out. No, we don't <laughs> remove the eyeballs. <laughs> we don't. No, we might if they had a false one and the family's Maybe asking to it. have it. Then yes, we would remove it for the family because they requested it, but. No, normally all that stays in there. So it would set good. So it would look yes. like their eyes are closed and it would have a good little... We, have, we use something pop. called an eye cap that helps keep them closed. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the eye cap. It's just this little plastic thing. We just It's kind of like a big contact. Doesn't have spikes like the on the eyelid sticks spikes? to it. Spikes? Yeah, doesn't have spikes on it so it can't slide around. It might. Oh my goodness. I know that. But this is it's the just, deceased, and it's for the family in America to get, get closure. Closed. Yeah, because mm -hmm. you don't want to see no that other. We close their mouths, and it's how do you close their mouth? Uh, we we can either do it with these. We have little wires that we can put in here and keep them shut, or you can go through here. And there's several ways to do it. There's several techniques. What's your favorite technique? Mm, the wires. The wires. I think it's I always prefer that one. They just seem to be the least invasive to me. Yeah. I mean, just wire it shut. Sometimes I want to the other one unless they had like osteoporosis, you know, and their their little gum bones just deteriorated to nothing or something. Have you ever been in an experience where? Because in a small town, you know these people, and you're like, man, they would not want to be seen like this. Let's not do a open casket, but the family wants to. You just have to keep your mouth shut and say, okay. And 
I might try to persuade them not to, but if that's what they want. Or they could do like a private, just for them to see the. Yes, we can do that. We do that sometimes, but sometimes they set on seeing. I think that's like a Texas, just a, it's just like a, it's part of our culture. I think they need it for closure. Yeah, but to have everyone come and see them. Well, like it's not required to embalm an embody in the state of Texas. You don't have to do it. You but do not have to embalm. But how much does an embalming cost? That I couldn't tell you. Oh, okay. I couldn't tell you. I can bring a price list though if you want it. I think that's interesting because it, 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 it is a business. It is a business, but it's, it's a dignified on price, price list. list. I just can't quote it. Yeah, that's fine. That's that jumbles up my brain. I got too much. Would in you say it's day. pretty expensive? No. I mean, I'd say it's worth every penny that if someone wants, yeah. I mean, I agree if that's their wishes and they want that. Because, I mean, when they say embalm, it's not just embalming. We take the deceased in there, we bathe them, disinfect them, then we embalm, then we turn around and redo, go through the whole disinfection process one more time. And, you know, that's when we'll wash their hair and Prepare that's when we start preparing them to be seen, to be dressed in cosmetics. What's that? Makeup. And you do the makeup? Yes. Believe it or not. She's a makeup she artist. Was, I know. <laughs> she was practicing on her mother. <laughs> she told her I to did. lay down. My school requirements. Close your down. eyes. I said, Mom, I need you. <laughs> So, um, what are some other good questions that I would like to know what happens to the body during the embalming? How long does the embalming process take? From start to finish, about two hours. Oh, I was expecting more. Oh, no. That's and that's, that's me. And I'm new, so I'm still really slow. I'm pretty sure my boss could probably do it in about 25 minutes. What is an embalming solution? Like, what's in, what's well, the most chemicals? Of it's formaldehyde. It is. What is but it? there's other chemicals that like that can kill someone, right? Like if we have one, you know, there's different chemicals for like if we get one that was really jaundiced. It's like a preservative. That's a whole different set of chemicals you use on them because if you use the regular ones, will it turn their skin back to a normal color instead of the yellow when they're really jaundiced? To a certain extent. But if you use regular embalming fluid on a jaundice one, they turn green. It's like mm -hmm. maybe fluorescent green even. And y'all just have all those on stock? Yes. We, yeah. are, we never know what we're going to get. Mm -mm. Then there's, you know, we have cavity fluids. and nothing. What's cavity fluids? Um, well, embalming fluids don't take all the contents out of their stomach and bladder and all that. So it's like mm -hmm. an acid? That kind of no, like it's just a stronger it? embalming fluid. Does it dissolve the? No, just preserves it. Preserves the it bowels? Just, it just stops the bacterial process from happening. That's pretty much all embalming does. It just, it doesn't stop it. It just slows it down. Nothing's going to hinder the. How long, how long, if, if you have an embal embalmed body in the ground, in a nice casket. We're talking like, um, what's a really, you mean nice like in pristine conditions where, how long until the body starts decomposing in the ground? I'm going to say at least six months to a year. Oh my gosh. That's, that's crazy. Before you would, I mean, yeah, their skin's going to show some drying out, but you're still going to be able to recognize them probably then. Six months, two years. And that depends on whether you're, are you in a wood casket? That's what I was going to say, Cadillac casket. Casket. casket is what I was trying to, trying to. Like the metal really caskets, nice. most of them have seals. So they seal pretty good. Did you put them in a vault? Have you ever gotten a casket? Negative. <laughs> I've gotten in a casket. <laughs> you did. Negative on the casket. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Close the lid. <laughs> 
That's one of those things we only use once, and once a body's been in it, whether it's alive or deceased, we can't use it again. That's another one. So the bag in the casket, can't use it again. I'm going to say 99% of our stuff is one use only. What about this? Have you ever had anyone say, yes, I want you to do my funeral, my, my loved one's funeral, everything, um, embalm the body, but I'm bringing my own casket? Yes, you're welcome. You're, you can buy them at Costco. You can buy them on... Walmart sells them now. I mean, they're so they can we buy do their have own waivers casket. though that you are going to have to sign with our company. That says you did purchase this. We are not responsible if the bottom falls out of it. Oh, have man. we seen that TikTok with that? <laughs> with <laughs> the body? Yeah. Well, and I'm not going to say they're all bad quality, but it, it's kind of CYA there. CYA. <laughs> CYA. <laughs> See for yourself. Oh, cover your ass. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally. You don't. I mean, well, it's it, it is. I mean, there's a lot of legalities involved if you know your pallbearers are toting the body over to the to the little carrier, the little truck that we have to set them on, and they fall out the bottom. Or if it doesn't fit your vehicle, our caskets all come with a warranty. They, the casket company provides a it's a good warranty on them. What if it did fall? What would happen? Well, what would the warrant? What would the warrant? You're be? talking about after the fact that I already panicked and fainted, or yeah, that too. Uh, Panic, fainted, came back it. too. Really believed it. Did this just happen? Because we're talking this is going to happen all pretty quick. Here. Yes, and then people tripping over, possibly. Yes. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Left a pause for a minute. We were interrupted today for FedEx, who brought in an order for Gypsy Greens. Contact Gail for all of your natural natural remedies, remedies and great tea. She also has a really good sinus allergy concoction over there. All good stuff over there to help with the living. Now we're back. Yeah. To Rena. <laughs> I'm not going to say they fall out every time you use them. <laughs> third, we call that a third party. But you, you, you've had people say, I got my own casket and I bought it off of Facebook. They can. I mean, they're legally. Because I see sometimes. in there, I'm going to say, okay, we're happy to take it. Here's all my forms I need you to sign. So I've seen that caskets for, for sale on um, mm -hmm. buy, sell, trade. And I was wondering why they had it, and it kind of looked a little used, but that's not on y'all. Nope. So many people as they won't get in the ones they own. Yeah, y'all just don't do that. We just don't know who they are or why they were in there. Mm -hmm. And we're not asking. Mm -mm. Um, so with the, okay, they have 24 hours. What did you say about the 24 hour rule? to I need to have them in refrigeration or in the ground but 24 hours pretty close could you tell someone in Texas if you wanted to just to keep the body and say I don't need y'all we're gonna we're gonna bury this person ourselves we highly don't recommend that yeah I know but can, and can they do that I, I've seen it legally happen. I don't know the ramifications of that not re not referring to this company not not speaking on behalf of anybody except my personal experiences and this was before i went to work at raleigh funeral home um yes i i've seen a family go bury their own and you're so you can do that they did it they did it they did it it's been done i don't know I don't know. I don't think they got in trouble. I think they may have had some trouble getting their death certificates, but because yeah, y'all help with all that too. But I, we don't. Re we we really don't recommend doing that. It's not good. Yeah, it's not good. And they do they have to have the hole six feet in the ground? Mm -hmm. Is that the? That's is, just a guess, though, but okay. Because sometimes you there's some rock that we can't dig through. 
Yeah, especially here. I mean, even with the rock hammer that we use on, we have one digger that he's got a bigger backhoe with all the attachments and sometimes we, we put them as deep as we possibly can. Okay. Um, I really are there think any... that just all come from the old Kelly Western days anyway. Yes. Do y'all offer any pre-planning options or funeral prepayment plans? A lot. Good. You have to be licensed to do that. Sell that. It's called insurance is what we call it. And right now we have one that is down at our funeral home. She'd love to fix you up. I highly encourage everybody, no matter what your age is, go make your free arrangements. You know, we're all going to die. Even if you don't pay for it and do the pre-funded one, just go make your arrangements. Fill out all your family stuff, all the things, so all the anyone your can do that. needs. That way the family's not burdened with it. Your kids are not burdened with it. And you get what you want. They know you're getting what you wanted instead of having to guess what you wanted. It just makes it a whole lot less stressful. Yeah, I could. So anyone could go down anyone. today and to Riley Funeral Home and make their pre-arrangements. And let's say they die though in Mississippi. You can still do it. They can, they'll get the arrangements from y'all? Is it like going a system? We'll work that out of the details when you get there. Cause yeah. sometimes it's easier to do it at hours if you know you're well, they will coming ship it. there. Yep. Cause that involves a lot of ship in, ship out. And Extra cost on the family. Yeah, it just sometimes it's easier to do it at ours. Sometimes it's easier to let them have it and then transfer it over. Um, there's just there's a, ten different ways we could do it. But I mean, as far as a pre need goes, you can get you a envelope and start tearing little pictures out of a magazine and I like this. I want this song. And start shoving them in there. So that can constitute your pre need. And that would be nice because then it's like the family gets to have closure and they didn't have to think about, they didn't have to make the decision of what song to play. It's almost like it is a show for them to say goodbye. Mm -hmm. They just have to go. A surprise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We come in there and we said, well, your, your mother just, she had, she already had pre-fund, pre-funded, pre-arranged arrangements with us. And we go sit there and go over it with them, show them the, we have to show them what the cost of it now would be versus what it was then. We show everybody our price list. Everybody gets to see the price list. Whether you want to or not, you get to see it. Yes, yes. That's just a requirement with the funeral commission that we do. But um, they can be as in-depth or as vague as you want it to be. Look what if I wear out. like music on glitter pop? Would you be doing the glitter? If you wanted it. Or what, what, who's your partner? What, um, what's the first name? Arlen. Arlen, we think. <laughs> you have big confetti cans. Yes. Yes. That's all that you wanted. wanted. <laughs> that's what we would do. I mean, that's pretty cool. We, Whatever I mean, you wanted. People don't realize the extent. They have, you can order live butterflies to release at a funeral. Oh. You can have a dove release. You can, there's, but I mean, we kind of shy away against the balloons. They're just not environmentally, they're just not good. No, not good. They're going to land somewhere, get wrapped around some little bird's neck or something. And Biodegradable confetti. Yeah. yeah. Y'all are standing in no, line. I mean, no, it depends. <laughs> Celebration of life, that's, you're supposed to be celebrating. Yes. Not mourning, you're celebrating. Yes. That can be the big barbecue dance, whatever thing you want, or with the body there. It, well, most of the time a celebration of life is a cremation. So. I know, but what if we wanted to have a celebration of life with the body in the, in the casket from Walmart? Y'all would bring it. We could do it. <laughs> from Walmart. I can make it happen with the glitter. I can make it happen. What about food? Do y'all provide the food? We can. We don't normally offer catering services just because of where we are yeah you know if we were in the big city they have businesses that do that all the time it's just a little hard for us to find it but if you wanted it and gave us plenty of notice 
Yes, we can make that happen. They have cookies. I know, y'all have cookies and coffee. Well, we serve that to all of our visitation. Yes. The cookies are really good. They are really good. <laughs> our cookies are the best, by the way. They Thank are you, really Minnie Keith. Yes, those are some good cookies. Mm -hmm. And it's always, you go in into y'all's home. Is it okay if I call a funeral home a home? It is our home. You're there a lot. And that one is our really our home because that's a 200 year old house. Oh, 200 years old, only been used for funerals? Mm -hmm. Mr. Raleigh had a dual purpose, I believe, when he first lived there. You know, he did like the funerals in one part and the house, and then they've added on, and then that part of the added on was not good, so they hauled off that part, and then they moved in the, what we have now is the chapel. Chapel when did, when did funerals in. start becoming a thing, and what happened to make it turn from putting... People have always done funeral services of some sort, even the ancient Egyptians, the caveman. Yeah, I know, but why You they, know, they, they shrouded them in hides, and, you know, that was their way of protecting the body and kind of sort of embalming them. I mean, they didn't really embalm them, but they shrouded them. To protect him they would lay i forgot what that stuff is but it's like a salty clay that they would find in the ground and put it on them maybe you know and it just protected them the egyptians they they were the best they were the mummifiers yes they were they were they were good at they were good but the vikings they i mean they're the ones that brought in the mound burials what if i wanted my body Viking style to be floating down Leon River on fire. <laughs> Shot out of a cannon. <laughs> yes. Well, number one, I'm going to say. Probably not. It could probably happen. <laughs> but it's going to cost you. <laughs> it would be expensive. And, and that's not going to be cheap. <laughs> that would be so cool. Everyone's standing there with like twigs on fire. Why are you float down? I'm going to have to check out what the permits are going to be for. Yeah, because I, I mean, it would be a fire risk. Well, and the Vikings, they didn't really. You didn't sink when they burned you. No, you floated. They brought you back after you burned on the, out there. They pulled the boat back in and then they buried you in a mound burial. You're the rest of your so called cremated remains, what's left of you. You and know, they would put your, in your dog and your little servant that they sacrificed with you. Do you ever um, have, have, what's the story? It doesn't have to be your experience, but I'm sure y'all talk. What has been the craziest request as far as um, someone wanting something to be buried with them? Hmm. Has there ever been a dog? No. I don't think so. My, this is the craziest thing. I mean, and it's not crazy. I put cigars in there because him and his friend always smoked a cigar at this exact time that he was going into the, the crematory and that's he gave him one to put in there and his friend was going to smoke one at that time and they were going to have their last cigar. That's a, yeah, that's, that's, that's I mean, touching. Yeah, it is. People put all kinds of stuff in the casket, though, with their loved ones. Like, you know, if they're little grandkids and stuff, they draw pictures. And yes. To me, it's very touching. It's it's loving. It's, it's loving, yeah, and it gives it that personal touch. I put pictures, you know, of the family, blankets. Do you have people that want to take pictures of the body? Because yes. that's also a thing, too. Yes, we do. It's starting to fade out because it, not maybe with well, my generation. It's just with y'all's generation. Yeah, it's Yaller. starting to fade out. Yeah, because we don't want that. Well, then, and you don't really get pictures printed out anymore. Everything's, and you can't just go post a dead body on I mean, like social the media. Hashtag well, Hashtag dead. <laughs> well, in the 1800s, that was the thing. They would prop the dead up in the yeah. casket and I then take a picture, family picture like with it. Yes. Without the that body was the only time anymore. they ever got together and got a family picture. And then they would do... You do have to have that. I mean, I can't just let random people go in there and start clicking away. Okay. We kind of, we ask the next of kin, you know, and that's one. But it is a request that some people want. That's crazy. I, I did not want that. 
I don't know. I'm one of them. I'm a picture taker. You're gonna want the picture. Mm. I'm it happened. I, you don't gotta have a picture. It happened. They're not. Here. I've got pictures of most of the funerals I've been to that are my family. I mean, I feel like that would be rude. Someone walking up to me and like, let me take you a picture. Well, we don't let them do it whenever there's people. The service. In service. But I bet if you, you need to come late some. or come early. And has there been some that have walked up and pulled their phone out and was like. I just want to take some pictures of Jeffrey Dahmer. Well, we we've had a couple. But so we we, we politely ask him to please refrain and yeah, that's rude. And let us make sure it's insensitive. The family and then we'll close everything. Yeah. Know, did we'll you ask? Off and I mean, they did you ask the family if you come up here and take pictures during the ceremony? Mm, yeah. Number one is who are you and why are you taking pictures? Yeah. So that you this has happened. Yes. Wow. That's just rude. People without just any common, common sense. sense. I remember one time I was at a funeral and it was right when the flip phones came out with the camera and the person laid next to it. <laughs> You're in the Selfie. service. Flipped it yep. in the service. Flipped, no flipped it up. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure we'd have to draw the line on that one. <laughs> I mean, it was too late. What's done is done. <laughs> they flipped that. <laughs> Real. And sometimes it, things like that odd and unusual happen faster than you can shut them down. Yeah. And you just have to apologize, make the best of it. And well, you can't control other people's behaviors or actions. No, we try, but they're going to do what they're going to do. I mean, like our funeral services at Riley, to me, they're like a well choreographed, I have a list, I know what's going to happen here, what's supposed to happen here. This goes here, we play songs there. Oh, we're gonna reopen and do pass by here. Sometimes What's pass by? Were they that's when that's the last the, the last time when people get to pay their last respects to the family and the deceased. Usually after that we lock and close it and she stays that way till How do you lock it? We have a key. Can we show you one? Yeah. I don't know. yeah. That, that locks the. All good funeral directors keep one in their pocket because you just don't know when you're going to need it. Oh, oh wow. wow. They you keep that thing pocket. in your pocket. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, she's even got her name on it. And y'all do it pretty, like, no one really sees it. It's like, yeah, exactly. We try to be very discreet about it. Sometimes there's one casket in particular, I won't name it, but a brand. you have to stick it in the end of it and you crank and crank and crank and crank and crank and you think it's never going to get locked. <laughs> and it eventually does. Mm -hmm. so, good fear of it always keeps Kleenex too. Yes. You never know when the family's going to need them. That's, that's true. Oh, hey, the cemetery. That's one good thing about, you know, the pros and cons of living in rural Texas, but it's just, it's a different type of level of care and respect when you Bottom born line here, raised here. Care. Yes, y'all do. We care. You care about the family and then their, this, this experience, because it, it's, it is an experience for, yeah. for their um, little loved one. We have They're a, lot living. Of, a lot of younger, and when I say younger, I'm talking like in their 30s, early 40s. They've never actually buried a close loved one. Yeah, they may have been to a funeral, but they didn't actually have to do the whole process. And they come in there, and they're just like, you can just tell, you can see the fear in their eyes. They're just scared to death. They've heard all these horror stories about how funeral homes treat people, and we're trying to change that. Well, I'm I like, think y'all are doing a good job with that, for sure. Well, thank you. Very, It's very, you feel comfortable, and, I mean, you, you make the very best of it. We want it to be a very meaning process for this family I've noticed with since COVID I feel like there's been a lot of detachment even with my own family but it seems like there's been more um, cremations than the actual funerals have you noticed that here is there more cremations well, yeah. cremations are increasing but I don't know if it's because of COVID or whether it's just monetary. Or cheaper. Well, it is cheaper, but I think, I mean, the society today is the way our grandparents believed versus the way y'all believe. You don't, 
think cremation's a bad thing, do you? Mm -mm. But they do, yeah. Yeah, they thought, oh no, being burned, that, that, that's the quickest way to hell. We ain't doing that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's all what you, you've grown up around. Yeah, and times are changing. I mean, they just do. They're always going to. And eventually they'll make this little circle and come back to, oh, no, we're back to burying again. I heard that you could get cremated and turn into a diamond. You can. I'm going to have to go do my arrangements and make that happen. We have um, a friend coming in named Shannon Kai. <laughs> She's banging on the door. Banging on the door <laughs> with her in. sonic cup saying it's hot. I thought we were the only ones that had psychopaths that showed up at the back door. <laughs> I don't know what she's saying. What did she just say? You can, okay. Well, I don't know if she needs in. Just keep it going. All right, we'll keep it going. Um, Let's wrap it up. Sorry, Shannon. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to wrap it up. We're i got a service to, to get to. We will have to have Rena back to go over more. This was more kind of, of just my things that I wanted to know about. It wasn't necessarily as informative as I wanted it to be, but we'll go back and have another one and go over exactly the benefits and um, just more of the process. Yeah, maybe we can talk of, about pre-arrangement plans. Yeah, like, like that. Pre-arrangement like plan. That and That's what we need to do folder next. and show you, you know, yes. there's certain information that we have to have. So we're going to have Rena back to do pre-arrangement planning and go over the, um, could you go over the price list with that yeah. or no? We go over that. It's public. We can do that. Yeah. And, that'll, and I think that'll be good. This one was more of me just kind of curiosity kills yes. the cat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So thank you, Rena, for coming well, and having welcome. us. Thank you for pleasure. Dignity um, Funeral Home. They are wonderful and easy to work with, even on the hospice side when we had to work with them. They were there quick and always did everything very dignified. So y'all have a great day and stay safe. <laughs>